It's not going to be too difficult today, but we're going to, we're going to run uh, several Topaz uh, AI pieces of software on this program. Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Mask AI. So we're going to really go through the uh, AI programs today. So, hey, without any further ado, let's get started. We're starting out here in Lightroom. This is a raw image here. So let's start off by um, clicking Auto and see what kind of result we get. Okay, that's not bad. It's a little yellow for me. Now it is a yellow flower, but the it's a little yellow and the background is a little too green. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset the saturation back to zero as well as the vibrance back to zero. Yeah, and that helps a little bit. The next thing I wanna do is come into the HSL section here and uh, get the saturation tool. Just click right here in this little icon right here. And I'm just going to go on to a stronger green color and click and drag straight down. I just want to ease off in that green a little bit. And then I want to come over to this yellow right here and click on the yellow and drag down a little bit. And just get rid of a little of the yellow. Now I want some of the yellow in there, but I don't want all of it. I don't know. For me, that's a lot, a lot more pleasing of an image now. Now, so you know, I'm going to open up detail here. I'm not going to do any sharpening on it here because I'm going to use uh, Topaz Sharpen AI for that. And I won't use any noise reduction as well. All right. I'm going to use Topaz for that because that is my workflow. Let's come back up here to basic and make sure we like everything. Let's look at our histogram. Everything looks good there. Um, maybe let me see what happens if I give it just a little bit more exposure. Yeah, maybe just the tad bit more exposure maybe pull these highlights back just a little bit but i find the auto works out pretty well for me i'm not going to touch texture or clarity here or dehaze everything looks good i don't know about you but i think the flower's leaning a little bit to the right hand side so let me go ahead and get the crop tool here i'm going to turn the lights out and i'm just going to straighten this flower up yeah somewhere right around there yeah, that looks good. Turn my lights back on, and I'm going to go ahead and type the return key to accept that crop. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I can go ahead and right-click the image and edit in Photoshop 2020. The first thing I want to do in Photoshop is send this into Topaz Denoise AI. So I duplicated the background layer and named it Denoise AI. Now this was ISO 400, but this is my older was an older uh, camera of mine, a Canon uh, 40D, which could be a little bit noisy. And it was, again, ISO 400. But as you can see, there's a good bit of noise in there. So I need to get rid of that noise, even at ISO 400. So let's go ahead and launch Topaz Denoise AI. I'm using the side-by-side uh, -side view here. So the image on the left is the before. The image on the right is the after. Again, this was ISO 400, so I don't think I need to use the uh, new low light mode. I think I'm going to be okay in the regular mode, so I'll leave that off. And uh, I'm going to put this on auto detect settings, and it'll go ahead and update itself. Yeah, and that looks really good. Uh, remove noises at a 2 and the sharpness at a 43. I'm going to go ahead and leave that sharpening on there. To me, this is just giving me a little bit of capture sharpening, because images that are in camera raw are always a little bit soft right out of camera. So I'll let it do a little bit of capture sharpening. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to go ahead and apply it. It's just that quick and simple. I always like to check my results. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in. All right, here's our, these. this is our result right here with the Denoise AI. Here's the before. Can you see all that uh, noise there? And here is the after. And I, I just love Denoise AI. You know, I have yet to find anything that works quite as well as it. It's quick, it's fast, and it's very, very efficient. And so now what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, duplicate my background layer, and I'm going to call this one Sharpen AI, because I want to run this image through Sharpen AI and see if I can get a little more sharpness out of it, because I feel I may have had a little bit of camera shake in this image, and we'll see if that can help us there. It does amazing things with images that have uh, errors like uh, camera shake or slightly out of focus uh, problems. But let's see if it can do anything with this image. 
We'll come up to Filter and down to Topaz Labs and find Sharpen AI and we'll go ahead and launch it. If you think Sharpen AI looks a little different, it does because this is a new update uh, version 2.1.0. Now they added a couple new features here. I'm going to use one of those right now and that is under Mode. Let's click this to Auto. It'll automatically detect what mode it feels it should use. So let's go ahead and turn that on and you can see it chose the Stabilize mode. And then for settings, we can click auto and it'll automatically choose the settings for us here. So these are two new features. So we'll see what we get here. And man, that looks really, really good. Uh, let's see what the before is. I'm just going to click the canvas here. Here's the before and here's the after. So man, that looks really nice. So it gave me a sharpness of 56 and a noise reduction of 14. I don't really need any noise reduction in here because I've already eliminated the noise. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that back, take that off and let it update itself. But that looks really good. So it said I needed a stabilization mode. And so there it is. I might just bump this up a little bit more and see if I can get a little more sharpness out of it. Yeah, but I like that little extra sharpening here. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Here's the before. And here's the after. Wow, that looks really good. I don't know if you can see that, but let me go ahead and zoom in on this image so you can really see how much sharper it is. Okay, so let me show you the before. Here's the before. So study that for a second or two. And here's the after. But look how much sharper that is. Amazing results. Next, I want to work in the background a little bit. And to do that, I want to send this into Topaz Mask AI. So I went ahead and duplicated the background layer. And now let's go ahead and launch uh, Mask AI. Now we have different masking modes here, like we have Auto Detect Subjects and Auto Detect Sky. Sometimes I have issues with flowers, so but let's try Auto Detect Subjects. I don't think it's going to work. Let's click it. Yeah, it's having some trouble with this, so let's just click the undo, and I'll just get my brush tool and make sure I have my blue uh, computing brush up. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, and I'll just go ahead and paint around the flower really quick here. We want to keep the flower area and uh, we want to cut out the background area, or in our case, we want to change it, either darken it or lighten it. So let's go ahead and get the uh, cut bucket, the red bucket right here. Click on it and just click in the background area and that puts a red uh, cut area there. So now we'll just click on compute mask. Now you have two choices, uh, AI for artificial intelligence, for harder masks, that's what you want to use or you can use the contrast. In this case, let's try the AI. So I'll click compute. Okay, so I have this in a show two window view right here. So on the left is my uh, before and on the right is my after. And uh, let's go ahead and click on background and click on blur because I want to blur the background possibly a little bit. Um, this is the default setting of 33. Now, if I shut it off, it would look like, like that. Or if I gave it more blur, it would look like that. So I think I might give it a little bit of extra blur, something like there. And if I wanted to, I could, uh, I think the color's a little strong in the background for me. So what I might do is take the saturation and pull back on that saturation. Not, not too much, but maybe to maybe around 10, just to give a little more emphasis of saturation on the flower rather than on the background. And I think that looks really good right there. So I'm happy with that. So, and that's all I wanted to do, a little bit of blur and a little bit of saturation removal on the background. And that's cool. So I can click apply. And then I have two choices. I can send it back as transparent or composite. I'm going to send it back as a composite with that extra blur in the background and that little bit of saturation reduced in the background. So I'll just click on composite. Here we are back in Photoshop. This is what the image looked like before Mask AI. It was really nice, but I thought the background could get a little softer. If I could get a little more softness out of that background, I'd be really happy, a little more creamier background. And if I could just get rid of some of that background saturation, just a little bit so that the flower pops a little bit. And that's what I use Mask AI for. And we ended up with this result right here. 
a little more creamy background, a little less saturation. So Mask AI is really good for doing backgrounds and flowers just to soften them up and also alter that background. And you can also alter the foreground if you want to. So you got a lot of flexibility there with Mask AI. Today, this image started out in Lightroom, did some basic adjustments to it, brought it in here to Photoshop here, and it looked like this after Lightroom. So it was pretty cool. But then I added three wonderful uh, Topaz AI products to it. Topaz Denoise AI, which got rid of the uh, noise problem. And then Sharpen AI, which sharpened up an image that was really out of focus due to some camera shaking, some, you know, an image stabilization problem. But Sharpen AI fixed that. There's no other piece of software on the planet that can do the sharpening job that uh, Topaz Sharpen AI can do, which I was really happy with that. Then we sent it into Mask AI and just uh, softened up the uh, background a little bit here and eliminated some of the color from the background. I was really happy with the result. Pretty basic edit today, but I wouldn't have been able to achieve it without these Topaz AI products, so I'm really happy with it. Now that I'm finished, all I need to do is either come over to the top layer, right-click it, and choose flatten image and just flatten it down if I don't want to keep my layers. But if I'm not quite done with it and I felt that I might want to do some more to it later, I could go ahead and come up here to file and just say uh, save or save as whatever. And then I could save it with the layers and then I could open it up again and keep working on it from there. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Hey, if you enjoyed it today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.